Good morning. Welcome to the Dave Fox Home Remodeling Show. I'm Gary Demas. Glad to have you listening this morning. And Jamie, uh, last week we had an interesting show, didn't we? We sure did. I learned a lot. Yeah. We talked about a lot. Of, some of the major things that can happen to a home. I guess when I say major, things that can cause a lot of trouble, but they remain hidden for a long time. Yeah. And once you see what's happening, then usually the damage is already done. So we gave some good pointers on how to predetermine if any of those things could be happening to your home. So Jamie, if someone's listening and they missed last week's show, what do they do? Well, uh, best thing to do would be to go to DaveFoxRadio.com and re-listen to the segment or the show. And you could also watch it on YouTube um, or from our even from our main website, DaveFox.com. You can go under our company to the radio page and see all of our shows there and watch the video, everything like that right from there. Sounds great. Yeah. Okay, so um, appreciate everybody tuning in this morning. We want to know that you can reach us by emailing info at DaveFox.com if you ever have any questions. Uh, maybe you did listen to last week's show and you have quick questions about some of the things that we talked about. We'd welcome your email. We'll be sure to get back to you. Yep. And, of course, our regular uh, website, as you mentioned, DaveFox.com and then DaveFoxRadio.com. So uh, thanks for being aboard this morning. And... Jamie, today we've got an interesting uh, show because it's talking about new products, right? Yeah. So uh, this week we're going to be looking at some of the product picks from KBiz, mm -hmm. which is the kitchen and bath industry show. Typically it's either in held in Orlando or Las Vegas. Uh, this year, though, it was actually virtual, which was not so as it was, exciting. It was held in cyberspace. Then. It was held in cyberspace. Okay. Maybe not quite as exciting as going to the big shows, you know, and traveling and everything like that, but um, still really cool. And you got, it was a little bit easier to see everything, which was nice because mm. you weren't on, you know, first of all, you didn't have to walk the 10 miles it takes to get around the whole show, <laughs> but yeah. also um, just being able to kind of click through and see everything that way was really fun and still got a lot of new awesome products out there. So we're just yeah. going to kind of go over some of their product picks. Um, they did a kind of a product pick of each day. So they did a bunch of them. Um, and these are some of the new ones that I thought were really cool. Yeah, so just to give everybody an idea of what uh, the Kitchen and Bath Show is, it's National Kitchen and Bath Show, and it's a worldwide event. So there's vendors from all over the world. It's a huge show. There's like, I don't know, 70,000 people that attend this when when it's not virtual, Yeah. <laughs> when it's real. <laughs> when it's real. <laughs> Which makes you wonder what will 2021, what will that show be like? Who knows? I know. But it's a giant show, and like I said, vendors from all over the world come, and they put up these big venues and booths and demonstrations. I think of Kohler in particular. They always have, like, an amazing booth there. Yeah. I no. mean, the, the booths in general are just amazing. Yeah. I mean, since I'm obviously I'm in marketing, I pay a lot of attention to the booths when I'm out there just designing our booth for our trade shows and things. And Gosh, what they're able to do is so cool. They yeah. also have a lot less uh, limitations at our trade shows. We're given very strict parameters of you can only go this high, you can go this wide. Like, there's a mm -hmm. lot of kind of rules, um, but they're 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 let free, yeah. <laughs> and it is awesome. Yeah, yeah. So it's quite an amazing show, and they've got it's all new products and new ideas. And many of the products you see out there actually aren't even available yet. I mean, they're in production. So they'll have all the prototypes and everything out there. So it's a great place to go to see the new things that are happening in the industry. Then there's software companies, just anything uh, that has to do with the kitchen or bath industry is yeah. there. Yeah, it's very cool. All right, you ready to start this list? Okay, go for it, Jamie. All right. So uh, first pick on the list is the Toto Washlet C5. Um, now a washlet, in other terms, is a bidet. Mm -hmm. um, these are really cool though, because it's actually not a whole toilet that makes it the bidet, it's actually just the seat. So you could put it on a different toilet. You don't need to buy the whole new toilet necessarily. Um, so it'll just fit right on your toilet. And it's really amazing all the things that this little toilet seat can do. <laughs> um, it comes with a remote control and it auto opens and closes. So when you walk up to it, it opens the seat for you and it, has a lovely cleansing experience. <laughs> My grandkids would have a blast with that. I, <laughs> walk up to it, walk away, walk up to it, walk away. 
I can only imagine. <laughs> I know, you know, my only experience with something similar to this, I'm not 100% sure which one it is, but at the new Ferguson showroom up on Polaris Parkway, they have, um, they have them in their like restrooms mm, in their public okay. restrooms mm-hmm. to use. Mm-hmm. So it's a definitely an interesting experience, but um, it's really cool. The seat is heated, which is lovely, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it also is really nice. They have a lot of self-cleaning features. So kind of the scrubbing of the toilet. I mean, you'll still have to clean your toilet, but it really elongates the process, the time between when you really need to deep clean your toilet, which is really great. Cleans the bowl um, and does a pre-mist, things like that. De- deodorizes, um, has temperature controls for the water. I mean, it's really amazing. All this in, in a, wrapped into a toilet seat. Mm-hmm. So they have um, what they refer to as their e-water plus, which after each flush, uh, it mists on the wand and the toilet bowl. So that's where it reduces the need for the harsh cleaning and chemicals Mm -hmm. um, in the toilet, which is great. And so that one was one of their product picks. It's really cool. Um, You know, along that line, people need to think about, and we try to advise people if they're, if we're remodeling a bathroom, (coughs) to put an electrical outlet right next to the toilet. Because these things do require power. So even if you aren't gonna put one in right away, or maybe you are gonna put one in, you need to have an electrical outlet there. So if you're doing some remodeling, it's a great time just to get that done because these are uh, great things and they're gonna become more and more popular as people uh, get used to them in their home. You know, in Europe, this was a normal thing. Bidets have been a normal thing for many, many years. Yeah. Because it's been kind of new to the U.S. in the last, you know, 10 years or so and gaining in popularity. So uh, if you've never really thought about it much, it's something to think about in any future remodeling. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I definitely, um, just by going on the photo shoots for our projects, see them quite frequently now, and yeah. they're definitely increasing in popularity, and, and they're interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so this next one I've decided I needed. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is also now my shopping list. <laughs> uh, this is really cool. So this is LG, came out with a studio wash tower. So it's one piece and it's a stacking washer and dryer. So that it's, but it's all one piece, oh. which is really cool. And a couple of things that I think are interesting about this, um, it being all one piece, all the controls are just kind of right there in the center and they communicate with one another. Oh. So if you set your washer to do, you know, a gentle cycle with cool water, it then also translate to them when you do the dryer to do a gentle dry on a low temperature and things like that. And you can change that, but at least it, it kind of interprets um, what you might need. And um, some other things that are really cool about it is it, well, it takes up half your functional floor, floor space, which is the great thing about oh, yeah. stacking mm-hmm. um, so that you don't need it side by side. You get all that extra floor space on there. And then on their website, they mention that it leaves room, you know, you can add a sink, the pet bath, et cetera, all that, if it's a mud room also, some hanging space. A lot of people kind of have that shared laundry room, mud room area. Um, but the center controls, like I mentioned, are nice because they're right at that right height. Whereas if you stack some others, sometimes they're way up high and you can't reach them, mm-hmm. uh, things like that. It also comes with an app for your phone. So it'll remember your preferred setting. It'll notify you on your phone when the cycle is over, or you can check how much time is left. Um, I know I personally walk into my laundry room 17 times to see how much time is left. <laughs> uh, Cause it always seems like you it's a lot of steps. Time. I know. Right. <laughs> so, and, and even just the, the cycle end notification on my phone, I think mm-hmm. I would personally, I would find that really, that actually makes a lot of sense. It makes a ton of yeah. sense because I like and hate, but ours makes a pretty quiet, noise when it's over Mm -hmm. um but yeah so my main reason i need this though is i want two of them oh two of them yes okay yes that's what i've determined i'll tell you more just put it on oscar's list yeah (laughs) we'll get that for you for something mother's day who knows i don't know okay let's take a quick break okay jamie so you were talking about you something you want two of yes (laughs) The LG Studio Wash Tower. Yes. So what are you going to do with two towers? Well, we're a family of five. Yep. And we have an enormous amount of laundry. Yeah. I feel like I am always doing laundry. 
And so I've actually been talking about adding a second washer and dryer in our laundry room just and stacking it. So to me, this was like the best solution because mm -hmm. it's nice that they come together and everything like that. Um, but yeah, I to be able to run two loads at the same time or even start one before the other one's finished, things like that, I've just been really intrigued to try that. Um, I feel like I live, we usually do, I do between 12 and 14 loads of laundry a week. That's a lot. That's a lot, especially with working full time. Yeah. I can't exactly do it when I'm not home. <laughs> yeah. So I, yeah, I feel like I am running laundry every time I'm home, the washing machine or dryer is yeah. going. So now you have side-by-sides? Yes. Okay, so you could have four units instead of two in the same footprint. That's right. Yeah. That's why I want this, yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> now, I, I do have a question though. Mm -hmm. Can I do that? Or do I have to do change some mechanicals and things like that or uh, the water? You would need to run You'd have two drain lines then and two um, electric lines that you would need. So a dryer, electric dryer is going to require a separate circuit for that. So if okay. you two of them. So it's not as simple as just buying two of these. Well, that's where it starts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get the electrician to run another circuit up to the dryer. So, and it's, is it second floor? No. Oh, first floor. first floor. That's easier. Yeah. But you have a finished basement, right? No. Oh, okay. Well, that's real easy then. No oh, problem. okay. Piece of and cake. And your plumbing would be easy too, so. All right. I advise just go ahead and get them. Just to go ahead and do it? Yep. Okay. I didn't actually look at the cost of these, but okay. um, but they sound great. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Well, after I buy two of those, <laughs> then I also, uh, Decton Surfaces, which is, it's a really cool product. We have it on display in our showroom, and it's actually... Um, so it's a combination of quartz, porcelain, and glass, and it makes an extremely durable product um, from my understanding. So, and the really cool thing here that they've changed or added to the mix is kind of this array of colors. Mm -hmm. um, it used to kind of come in just kind of traditional colors and things like that, and they've really added and expanded to the collection of what you can do with this material. Um, but I thought it was worth mentioning just because it is so different and versatile. Uh, mm -hmm. It can be used really for just about anything. I mean, in your kitchen, bathroom, the flooring, wall tile, wall cladding, mm -hmm. even exterior facades. So it's also rated for outdoor use, which is yeah. really cool. Yeah, very, very durable product. It's heavy. It's expensive. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it can be used in so many different areas. If you have an overhang, like if we're using it in our uh, design studio at one of our tables where the interior designer meets with the clients and they look at product and stuff. Yeah. So it's spanning a real wide range, distance between support. And it's such a strong product, it can do that. Uh, much more so than quartz or granite. Yes. So it's just v extremely strong, extremely durable. Uh, and you know, with any new products, decton has been out for a few years, <clears throat> but with any new product like that, uh, any composite or man-made product, the colors are always starting, you know, very sparse and yeah. and plain. And then you add to that line, like we've seen in quartz. I mean, Cambria has just gone crazy with all the different colors and products yes. they can create in quartz now. Uh, so same with Decton. You know, they just come out with more beautiful colors, more variety of um, patterns and, and colors for the different tastes of clients that would use it. Yeah, and so this, this collection of colors, they say, was inspired by Venetian stucco. Hmm is apparently going to be on trend. So. Everybody should have some of that in their house. I mean, right? <laughs> so yeah, there's some great new colors added to the collection and just a really cool cool product worth, uh, worth bringing up again. Yeah. But yeah. And then another one that was really cool um, was Miele, who I always think of Miele for their kind of built-in coffee makers. Yeah. But they actually do all appliances, and they're quite beautiful, really. Mm -hmm. They Again, they have those on display at uh, the Ferguson showroom on Polaris as well. But they're beautiful, proce uh, beautiful products. And this dishwasher, one thing that really drew me to it that I thought was cool is it automatically pops the door open when the cycle is done. Yeah. So it can let out all that heat oh, okay. and air so there's no condensation on the dishes. So how far open does the door come? I think it just pops it. Oh, okay. You know, so just it's cracks just, a little bit. Yeah, it just mm -hmm. cracks it a little bit enough to let out all that um that kind so of So you can walk by the dishwasher and not worry about being tripped. Yeah, no, it's not <laughs> gonna door it's not gonna like down. slam open on you or anything <laughs> we like that. You put a cushion on the other side of it. But just enough so that not only do you know it's done, but then also um like I said, just to 
alleviate all the condensation on the dishes. I sure. know, especially like on Tupperware and things like that, the plastic it always is wet. We always have to towel dry everything after. Mm -hmm. um, and so this, with it just popping open like that, kind of alleviates all that, which would yeah. also then you wouldn't have spots on your dishes, anything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my dishwasher, when it's done with the cycle, just puts out this real high pitched noise that you can, it's amazing because you can hear that for such a distance, but it's such a faint noise. It's yeah. just at the right frequency where it gets your attention, but you know, and you can just kind of detect it. No matter what you're doing, it's interesting. That is interesting. But then we have to walk over to it and physically open, open the it. Open well. it. Do it automatically. <laughs> I mean, gosh, I've got to get rid of that piece of junk we have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Other thing that was really cool on this dishwasher is they have a um, tur turbo cycle. I think they call it, and it's only 58 minutes. Anything with a turbo cycle is cool. Right? Yeah. It's got to be. <laughs> but I thought a 58 minutes was pretty impressive um, for a dishwasher yeah, anymore. Definitely. So, yeah, the quick power wash. Um, mm -hmm. It's full wash and dry cycle in only 58 minutes. Yeah. So this is a full-size dishwasher, right? Yeah, so, full-size mm -hmm. dishwasher. Uh, another unique feature on it is actually where the silverware goes. Um, I'll post a picture here with this recording if you're on our website and want to take a look at it. But the top, it has three racks, first of all. So there's you know the bottom traditional rack, and the second rack is pretty traditional as well. And then the mm -hmm. third rack is a really thin kind of rack that comes out, and you lay your silverware on top of that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of an interesting, different approach. Or spatulas to so, or just any... Yeah, you can kind of lay everything on there. There are dividers if you wanted to put them in there. Mm -hmm. um, but you can just kind of lay everything on there, which is nice. Um, you also then uh, don't run into the issue of, you know, sometimes if you overload too many messy forks in one little compartment, yeah. they, they don't quite get clean because they're mm -hmm. on top of each other, things like that. So these there's a place like to lay each piece of silverware? Yeah, it looks okay. like it. From what I could see of the videos and stuff online, it was really cool. Um, or on the uh, virtual KBiz show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it was just a really interesting product, but I thought that was really cool. And is this product available now, do you know? I believe this one is. Okay. Uh, this one I think is available. Okay, um, so that's Miele, M-I-E-L-E. -E. Yes, yes. And um, also has really low energy. Like it uses low yeah. energy, which is great so too. It's the so Miele it's a, G5000. Yeah, the G5000, it even sounds cool. Yeah, with turbo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, and then Gary, I have one you are gonna love. Okay. I'm You're gonna go for shopping this. for this one next. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. So Flow by mm. Moen, yes. we've talked love about it. that before. Mm -hmm. You have it, you love it. My dad has it, he shouldn't, he's too <laughs> obsessed with it. <laughs> but now they came out with a new one and this one goes to your sump pump. Sump pump, Flow, oh, so it's not called Flow then. It's, it's still called Flow. Oh. So I think they're making kind of a whole line of these Flow by Moen products. Mm -hmm. And so there's the one that you have that monitors the water, water yeah. mm -hmm. consumption in your house. Mm -hmm. And then this one's a smart sump pump monitor. And that, this I don't is not available yet. Okay, that is a very smart idea. It's really cool. Because sump pumps, we always, okay, we've got the typical battery powered backup, right? And year by year, we go on, no big issues, no big issues. And then we get this seven year, 10 year rain and all this water pressure and all of a sudden water's flooding into our sump pump area and the sump pump doesn't turn on because the power's out because a flood knocked some transformer out and then our water fills with basement and we say but i had a watery battery backup water <laughs> pump why did this happen so after the break we're going to talk about that Okay, Jamie, so we're talking about this sump pump monitor, which That's I right. love that idea. Because being in this business, I've been aware of so many times. I, I, actually, I can't remember a time when a battery backup sump pump worked <laughs> because <laughs> the batteries are always, haven't been maintained. They old, they lost their charge. Yep. And, you know, these kind of weather disasters happen. I think they wait until the batteries are dead. Or it's like if your furnace is going to cut out, it waits till midnight when it's zero degrees outside. Uh, it you know, is amazing. The timing is always perfect <laughs> yeah. with nature doing this stuff to us. So sump pumps, you know, you, you think, okay, I paid and I have this battery backup system. I'm safe. Don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. Wrong. You do need to worry about it. You need to check it every year. But so many people don't. 
Um, and honestly, I don't have a battery backup system because my house is at the very top of the neighborhood and I'm so lucky. You know, I never have a drop water, no matter what it does outside. Knock yeah. on, I'll knock on quartz at this moment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm covered. I never had any water, but I've been in homes where that has been an issue. Yeah. So here you've got a monitor. So tell us about this. I'm interested in knowing Okay, about yeah. It. I mean, it's, it's really interesting. So the smart pump monitor, it detects your water levels, your performance, power loss, humidity, temperature, leaks, um, and the Wi-Fi status to help ensure that the pump is working efficiently and prevent against water damage. Hmm. With the ability to view real-time data, analytics, and sump pump status from your app. Cool. Um, I also think it's really cool if you're, because if you're out of town and you hear that you're getting dumped with rain, you know, to be able to check and make sure it's working and kind of see what sort of level it's at. Um, yeah. You'll also learn over time kind of its normal levels that it's used to and see eventually like, oh, this is, this is really pushing its limits, um, yeah. things like that. So, and you can also set up preferred notifications in the Moen app to get text, email, phone call. Um, and there's also an audible alarm to help protect the home. Yeah. So it's really this cool. This is really a worthwhile thing. Because if, you know, there's two types of people out there listening to us now. Those that had a basement flood and those that have not had a basement flood. Yes. The ones that have had one will probably rush to get this thing as soon as it's out. Because yeah. it's a nightmare to go through that. I yeah. lived through that once when we were living in Finley, Ohio, many years ago. And we got probably 18 inches of water in our basement. I'll tell you, if you want a way to get a bunch of stuff cleaned out of your house really quick, that's the way because it ruined oh, everything. That I know. was a terrible experience. We had that in our we had that happen in our house growing up. Really? I, I don't know how old I was. I remember it, but not old enough to you know care about what happened. I thought it was so cool. And oh, I asked yeah. if I could go swimming down there. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, "Can I go play in the water?" <laughs> no. <laughs> but I just yeah, my we had friends over, and my sister and I ran, were running down into the basement with our friends, and there was just. I mean, at least 12 inches of sitting mm -hmm. water. Yeah. It was a lot of water, and we thought it was so cool. Yeah. Okay, My parents so did not. <laughs> folks listening, this is by Moen, okay? Yes. And it's the sump pump monitor. Yeah, I actually don't even think it's on their website yet. Okay. So I don't know that you can even go look it up, but we'll we'll keep everyone posted of when it's available, because okay. this is definitely something something super cool. Very worthwhile. Yeah. yeah. And the uh, flow by Moen, which I have, you know, which detects water pressure, that's not a super expensive item. You know, it's like 400 bucks or something and then have someone install it. So for under $600, you can yeah. have that in your home. And have that peace of mind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, very <clears throat> cool. Okay, that's a great one, Jamie. Yeah, I, I knew you'd be excited <laughs> about that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so the next one here, this is a really interesting kind of forward-thinking product. This is by Samsung, and this is called the Bespoke. Um, and it's a line of refrigerators that can be completely custom designed, not completely, but pretty custom customizable. So mm. you can get towers, you can get full refrigerator, full freezer, kind of bottom freezer, top fridge, that sort of thing. But the really unique part is that it has eight colors and finishes that you can choose oh, from. Okay. And you can even make every panel different. So on one refrigerator, if you had, you know, a top, refrigerator and bottom freezer mm -hmm. and you had two of them side by side so it was kind of that traditional maybe 36 42 inch somewhere in there mm -hmm. um i don't have the dimensions of them in front of me but you could make all four different colors and different finishes so if it's you, really if you have a license to do that right <laughs> you should but you can really i mean the mix and match of it um it's really interesting and to think of kind of what that does to the design possibilities of a kitchen without having to get um, you know, the panel ready for, to match your cabinetry and things like that just really opens up the door to a more modern flexibility of style. Mm -hmm. Um, so they have really interesting colors and everything from champagne steel to white glass and sky blue yeah. glass. I mean, it's really, I, I would love to see them in person. This is where definitely the virtual versus in-person show kind of hurts you, but I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, um, it is. And it's by a good reputable company, Samsung. It's not like some new brand comes out with this idea. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. I thought so too. Um, the other thing that was really interesting on these refrigerators is the beverage center on the inside. It's internal or built in, and you can 
decide how it works. So they have the option to have kind of that traditional, you know, where you put your cup up to the button and it, water mm-hmm. comes out, mm-hmm. or it can fill a pitcher and the pitcher just sits right in there. It's kind of oh. like a live-in built-in okay. Brita and mm-hmm. you can take the whole pitcher out and put it on your table. Nice. So I thought that was really unique. I hadn't seen anything like that before. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also the dual ice maker, you can turn out cubed ice or a little small bite ice, which is kind of like a nugget ice, okay. which has um, become more popular to put in kind of those nugget ice makers and things like that. So I thought right. those were really interesting um, yeah. design elements that you could add to a space. Yeah, so it's kind of design features and practical features. So you've got the design element where you can pick multiple colors for the panels on your unit. Yeah. And also practical uh, beverage center and ice maker. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, that was the Samsung Bespoke Refrigerators. Okay. All right. Are and you then, ordering a couple of those too or are you good? You know, I don't know that I'm that, that cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not cool enough to have four colors on a refrigerator? No, I oh. don't think I am. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I also have too many toddlers in my house, and yeah. they tend to bang up So your refrigerator already has different colors on it. Just yeah, the mine has, <laughs> yeah. The, probably the most defining feature is the giant dent in the freezer. That's okay. a really special one. Right. People pay extra for that, I hear. Uh-huh. <laughs> special little children. Mm-hmm. Um, so next up we have from Top Knobs, which is a hardware company that we use quite a bit. Yeah. They came out with a Regent Park collection. Um, and this one was just on the pick list uh, from KBiz, I think just for its sophisticated elegance. Um, it kind of is a really upscale looking collection of hardware. It has a lot of kind of chiseled edges and detail to it. Um, it's nothing that maybe would stop you in your tracks, but overall give that kitchen kind of that sophisticated ele- elegance and uplifted elegance to a mm-hmm. space. Um, that was really nice to see um gives a lot of personality in the last few years it's interesting how cabinet hardware has become a real thing yeah (laughs) because i can think i've been like i say i've been in this business forever so for many 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 years you know it's a knob or a pull and this color or that color and they're kind of small and that's what everyone lived with and then we got into just in the last few years got into much more elegant hardware and oversized hardware and so now the cabinet hardware really is part of the design, a huge part of the design because it takes front and center, you know, prominence, um, especially the oversized hardware. Yeah, for sure. And um, and this this hardware in particular it was inspired by the royal grounds of London's Regent Park. So and it really kind of gives that vibe off of kind of that London royalty. Mm-hmm. Um, really cool. Mm-hmm. Really pretty. And it's probably available in a lot of f- finishes as well. Yeah, it has a bun- It has six different finishes that you okay. can get it in, um, which is really fun to play around with. Um, they have a couple different different poles and, and knobs and things like that, um, but just really stunning. You know, in some remodels, collection. when we're doing maybe cosmetic remodels, maybe a new countertop or something, and the cabinets are actually fine, but we put new hardware on, that can just make a world of difference. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I agree. It's not an expensive thing to do. I mean, these pieces of hardware are more expensive than what you would typically think of. But in the scope of things, for very little money, you can make a huge difference. Yeah. Okay, we got to take a break. Okay, Jamie, so we're talking about new products from the Kitchen and Bath Show. Yep. And it was done virtually this year. It was. Instead of in person. So it saved you from walking all over the place. I know. Miles and miles looking at all the products. But I kind of love it. (laughs) Yeah. But anyways, it was better than nothing. So uh, in case anyone's just tuning in, we've been talking about new products that were presented at this show virtually. And every year, this is a worldwide event. So vendors from all over the world come up with the latest and greatest for kitchens and baths. And believe me, some of it is dazzling, mind-blowing. and we've been just, you've picked out some of the coolest units that are still practical, right? It's yeah. <laughs> not super crazy. Yeah, we left out some of the super crazy, but um, yeah, so this list was actually put together by KBiz um, as some of their product picks mm-hmm. um, from, actually, if you can believe it, this was just their picks from the first day of the show. Oh, really? Yeah, so we can, uh, maybe we'll do this again coming okay. up here in the next few weeks and do another kind of pick or roundup of some cool yeah. products. Sounds good. But yeah, so we've gone over some really interesting things. This one, and this trend 
I've noticed is really starting to take off, not only with this brand, but just kind of with consumers and other brands as well. But the idea of this chef sink, Mm -hmm. um, so this one's by LK, it's called the Circuit Chef Sink. And it's a kitchen sink reimagined is kind of how they refer to it. But it has everything. I mean, it's almost all you need in a kitchen. It has cutting boards, it has all these accessories and different workstations and it has different tiers that you can put things on, um, dual purpose, all sorts of things. It's just, I think, really interesting, especially for a smaller kitchen. Mm -hmm. It's funny because you would think in a smaller kitchen you'd want a smaller sink, but these are so functional. You almost want it to take up more of your kitchen um, and just kind of use it for all that it can do. Mm -hmm. Um, So it has Like I said, it has that two-tier workstation, um, and it keeps tasks within reach by sliding included accessories along two levels of workspace. Uh, Dual-purpose cutting boards. Boards are sized to fit uh, on the interior tier of the cooking and prepping area. Rotate the boards to fit on the upper tier and creates a seamless flow. So it's, and it even comes with a poly cutting board and a cherry cutting board for different uses and things like that. and it comes with a grid on the bottom, which is nice for so you don't scratch it up or anything like that or have that that lovely noise. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Um, it comes with a low pri- profile colander, a small colander, a large colander. <laughs> kind of comes with everything that you need. And it comes in various different sizes as well um, to fit in, fit in different workspaces. But mm-hmm. I just think that that idea of that kind of working chef sink is a really cool cool concept yeah this is a stainless steel sink right yeah this one's Mm -hmm. stainless steel um it is and like i said there are other brands out there making similar products Mm -hmm. um, but this one is is new from lk and kind of just an elevated utilitarian use yeah makes a lot of sense i've never had one of these type of sinks before i mean we've got one in our showroom i think that's yeah like this but this has a probably more broad scope of features uh, but if you just think of all the things that you do at your sink, I mean, my gosh, it's limitless. Yeah. And then to have the flexibility, and I suppose if you had something like this, you'd want nice convenient storage either under the sink base or in an adjacent cabinet so that you could store all the different cutting boards and stuff so you didn't have to walk across the kitchen to get them. Yeah. <clears> well, <throat> and even some of them come with kind of a built-in tray underneath the sink. Oh, that's nice. That you can put all the okay. different accessories in. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah. Okay. So, which was your favorite product? I have a guess. Well, well pro- yeah, the sump pump monitor seems so practical. Yeah. And it's something that nails so many people when the battery backup doesn't work when you need it. As we talked about, you know, it's always when you're least prepared that some kind of a weather occurrence is going to happen that's going to mess up your life for a while. Yeah. And basement flooding will definitely mess up your life. Yes. Yep. I know. I would say the sump pump um, is the smart sump pump is definitely something I'll purchase. Mm-hmm. But that washer and dryer is probably the most, yeah. the one I would want the most. Yeah. Just because, gosh, I live in laundry. <laughs> so that's the double stack that's all in one unit. Yeah, the so wash tower. Wash tower. <clears throat> so if you have a side by side washer and dryer, you could put, you could have two dryers and two washers in the same footprint with this unit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like I said, I think it's really practical for those um, laundry room, mud room, shared use spaces. Mm -hmm. If you don't have anywhere for kind of all that stuff you come in and out of a house with to get a stack in the tower and then have that extra square footage to fill up with shoes and coats and book bags and everything else we leave the house with. Yeah. So, you know, we've talked today about new products and the Kitchen and Bath Show, which is a worldwide event and people, Mm -hmm. vendors from all over the world offer their products. Many of them aren't even available yet, uh, such as the, my favorite one, the sump pump monitor, (laughs) but it'll be coming out probably sometime this year. Yes, should be. And I can think in years past, like Kohler would come out with a brand new color and sink and tub or something and you would wait and wait and wait before you, know, you could actually get your hands on it but it's nice to know what's out there and what's happening yeah and i'm just thinking you know this is a good way through the radio show to make people aware 
mm -hmm. um, of some of those new products. If they went online, so this was a virtual event. If people went online to the uh, National Kitchen and Bath site, would they be able to see any of these products? Um, you know what? That's a really great Great question. I know we, as members of the NKBA, have logins mm -hmm. um, to access this this sort of thing. I'm not sure, um, honestly, if a general consumer went on to take a look at that, mm -hmm. what they'd be able to see. Okay, it might be worth a try, though, in case yeah. you're listening and you really like to see some of these products or some of the other new ones that we haven't even covered. Yeah, for <clears> sure. So that'd be, what is that site? NKBA.org, I think? Yeah, or you could probably just do a Google search for KBiz, KBIS oh, sure. show 2021 and mm -hmm. kind of see what you can get your hands on. But Yeah, uh, and it's a lot of fun. Maybe they even have some of the virtual stuff available for people, you know, the stuff that they showed you guys. Who knows? Yeah, but well, I'll, when I, I'll post the show on our website. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're listening oh, right you now, link yeah, you can hop on the website and I'll kind of link some of these products and put the pictures on there and things so you can search through. That's a great idea. Um, and take a look at them to what whatever I can link, mm -hmm. find links for. Like I said, the, the sump pump actually I couldn't find on Moen's website yet. Yeah, that's so they So that's, that's not gonna be out that soon. <laughs> but so where, where will they find this on our website? So if you go to dayfoxradio.com okay. um, and then go to this show, mm -hmm. um, which will be the KBiz product picks, then in the body of that, kind of you can listen to the show and then also I'll put the pictures there and kind of some information. Sounds good. Okay, so we've got, uh, let's see, last week we did the tips for people. Yes. And... Uh, the particularly interesting thing about that show, Jamie, I think, is it's just not the common little tips that you Google and it says clean your sink once a week. You know, it's just yeah. dumb stuff that you already know. <laughs> we talked about things that really I've experienced over many years in the remodeling industry that can cause major significant damage to homes, but they're hidden and concealed. They're deceptive little boogers yeah. that can come and, and bite really strong. So <clears throat> this can be... Uh, situations where maybe you have a stucco home and there's areas in that home that are susceptible to leaking and if water gets in there it can trap the water in there and do damage over time and we talked about a lot of those different areas uh, that can affect a home that aren't necessarily things you would commonly look for but they can cause a lot of problems and these are things that I've seen firsthand you know in my years in the industry so uh, you may want to go, if you missed last week's show, you may want to go to Dave Fox Radio. And yeah. there you can watch the video or listen to the audio. Yes, we're also available on all podcast platforms. So if you want to listen in your car or listen back to any shows really easily, any podcast platform um, that's on your, even your cell phone, you can find the Dave Fox Home Remodeling Show that way as well. Listen to us anywhere. Sounds great. And you can always email us at info at if you have any questions. And we'll be back here next Sunday morning at 8. <laughs>